Isn't she cute? A great song for gathering together on this Thursday afternoon as we gather here at St Margaret's on this first week of our journey through Lent. My name is Mike Donaldson and it's good to join with you as we do each weekday afternoon here at St Margaret's. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give God the glory. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. We say our first canticle, the song of joy. Be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. For we are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. 
Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness from age to endures from age to age. The day is now past, the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. We pause in the time of silence to quieten our hearts as we come before God. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 136, and it's one of a few psalms where the second half of each verse uh, is this uh, repeating phrase, for his mercy endures forever. So it's a reminder to us of the way in which God has mercy on us and provides for our needs. I give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. I give, I give thanks, thanks to, God, to the God, God of gods, God, for his mercy endures forever. I give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To, to him, him who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. Who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. Who stretched out the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures forever. Who made the great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, for his mercy endures forever. Who struck down Egypt and its firstborn, for his mercy endures forever. Who brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. Who divided the Red Sea into two parts, for his mercy endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever. Who cast off Pharaoh and his host into the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. Who led the people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. Who struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever. Who slew mighty kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Gog, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever. Who made over the land as a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. As a heritage for Israel, his servant, for his mercy endures forever. Who remembered us in our humiliation, for his mercy endures forever. And delivered us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all that lives, for his mercy endures forever. I give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. God our Saviour, you sent Jesus into the world of sin and delivered him up to death for us. Kindle in our hearts the same love with which he loved his own to the end, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We tonight resume our journey through the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 26, beginning at verse 20. There was another man prophesying in the name of the Lord, Uriah, 
son of Shemaiah, from Kiriath-Jerim. He prophesied against this city and against this land in words exactly like those of Jeremiah. And when King Jehoiakim, with all his warriors and all the officials, heard his words, the king sought to put him to death. But when Uriah heard of it, he was afraid and fled and escaped to Egypt. Then King Jehoiakim sent Elnathan, son of Akbor, and men with him to Egypt. And they took Uriah from Egypt and brought him to King Jehoiakim, who struck him down with the sword and threw his dead body into the burial place of the common people. But the hand of Ahikim, son of Shaphan, was with Jeremiah, so that he was not given over into the hands of the people to be put to death. In the beginning of the reign of King Zedekiah, son of Josiah of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Thus the Lord said to me, Make yourself a yoke of straps and bars and put them on your neck. Send word to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the Ammonites, the king of Tyre, and the king of Sidon, by the hand of their envoys who have come to Jerusalem, to King Zedekiah of Judah. Give them this charge for their masters. Thus says the Lord, God, Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, this is what you shall say to your masters. It is I who by my great power and my outstretched arm have made the earth with the people and animals that are on the earth. And I give it to whomsoever I please. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, my servant. And I have given him the wild animals of the field to serve him. All the nations shall serve him and his son and his grandson until the time of his own until the time of his own land comes. Then many nations and great kings shall make him their slave. But if any nation or kingdom will not serve this king, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, then I will punish that nation with the sword, with famine and with pestilence, says the Lord until I have completed its destruction by his hand. You therefore must not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your soothsayers, or your sorcerers, who are saying to you, you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they are prophesying a lie to you, with the result that you will be removed far from your land. I will drive you out, and you will perish, but any nation that will bring its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will leave on his own land, says the Lord, to till it and to live there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The second reading tonight is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, commencing at verse 7 and continuing to chapter 6, verse 8. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. About this we have much to say that is hard to explain, since you have become dull in understanding. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, 
you need someone to teach you again the basic elements of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is unskilled in the word of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose facilities have been trained by practice to distinguish a good from evil. Therefore, let us go on towards perfection, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ and not laying about again the foundation, repentance from dead works and faith towards God, instructions about baptisms, laying on hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And we will do this if God permits. For it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once again been enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away. Since by their own they are crucifying again the Son of God and are holding him up to contempt. Ground that drinks up the rain, falling on it repeatedly, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. But if it produces thorns and thistles, it's worthless and on the verge of being cursed. Its end is to be burned over. May your word live in us. And, and bear, bear much fruit, fruit to your, your glory. glory. Thanks very much, John. And so we come to the second of our canticles, the song of Christ's glory. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The prayer or the collect for the week following the first Sunday in Lent. O Lord, who for our sake fasted 40 days and 40 nights, give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh, being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey your godly will in righteousness and true holiness. To your honour and glory, who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. On this 25th day of February, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we uphold to you, Father, the Diocese of Arizona in the United States. For the bishops, clergy and people, as they serve you in that part of the USA. We pray, guide them with your wisdom as they 
care for people going through difficult times, mindful of the extremes of weather that, that has been had and the ongoing challenges of COVID-19. In Australia, we pray this night for the Diocese of the Murray, Keith Dolby, their bishop. We uphold to you, Keith, the clergy and the people of the Diocese of the Murray. Fill them with your wisdom and may they know your grace and encouragement each day. In our own diocese, we pray for the parish of Chinchilla, Leichhardt Chinchilla Anglican Mission Area that is presently without a priest. We uphold to you, Father, that large area that is a coming together of a number of former parishes for your people as they serve you there. As we continue to pray for Anglicare Southern Queensland, we uphold to you, Father, the Community Aged and Disability Service North Coast, based at Harvey Bay. For the staff, for the clients, for the families of those who seek to bring support and care in the name of Christ. In praying for the schools, we pray this night for the Anglican schools business managers, bursars and senior leaders. We pray, give your wisdom and understanding to all those that look after the business and especially the financial aspects of school life in our many Anglican schools. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, hear our pray. prayer. Father, this night we uphold to you those who work in the emergency services of our community. We uphold to you the members of the police force, mindful of the challenges that they face in being called to situations of uh, distress and uncertainty. We are mindful, Father, of the way police are often called to situations of people affected by drugs. And we pray your wisdom, your protection on them in responding to those under the influence of drugs. We thank you, Father, for the work of the fire brigade, especially in those times when they are called not to fires, but to motor vehicle accidents for the need for your love and compassion in those challenging situations. We ask your blessing and grace upon all firefighters. And for our paramedics, for all their wisdom and insight bringing to bear on people in the mid midst of whatever health crisis they have been called to. We pray for your help and encouragement on them. We thank you, Father, for all that they do for our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our pray. prayer. And Father, we pray this night for shopkeepers, for those who put their livelihoods on the line to open a business, who mortgage family homes to establish a business. We're particularly mindful of those businesses that have done it so tough because of the impacts of COVID-19 on their business operations. We continue to pray for those in the tourist industry and those who run travel agencies, the uncertainties and challenges that lie before them. We pray that there would be compassion and understanding in the government in how it responds to those enterprises that have not been able to get back on their feet because of all the restrictions that COVID-19 continues to bring on their operations. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, watch over our families, we pray, wherever they may be. We thank you that while we're not always able to be there with them, yet you are. And so we bring to you our prayers and petitions for loved ones this night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we say together the evening collect. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night that we, who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world, may rest on your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the close of our service this evening. My apologies for the late start this evening. We were sorting out a minor technical issue with the software. But we thank you for your patience and being there. Uh, we have folk from 14 different locations with us tonight. And I do encourage you to share uh, this feed with your family and friends that will be a great help in uh, growing this congregation that meets each weekday afternoon. And so I bid you good night and God bless. I look forward to sharing with you again tomorrow evening as we gather from five. Oh